So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashish, and I'm presenting my work called EXT Fuse, which is an extension framework for file systems and user space. So let's get started. OK, there you go. All right. So compared to kernel file systems, uh, user file systems offer better security and system reliability. They are easy to develop, debug, and maintain. However, they perform poorly. And this is the focus of my work. I'm trying to improve the performance of uh, user file systems. Fuse uh, is the state of the art framework for developing user file systems. It allows user space to register file system handlers with kernel, such as open, read, write, etc. All file system requests are served in user space by corresponding handlers. Over 100 Fuse file systems have been written. They span across two categories, uh, stackable and network. Stackable file systems add incremental functionality on top of uh, underlying host file system. For example, Android SD card file system adds custom security check. In contrast, network file systems serve file system requests by talking to a remote server. So let's look at Fuse architecture. So the core component of uh, Fuse architecture is the Fuse driver. It's a thin interposition layer in the kernel that interfaces with the VFS. The second component is the Fuse daemon that implements file system handlers to serve requests in user space. As applications make system calls, the VFS delivers file system requests to the Fuse driver, which simply forwards them to the appropriate handlers in user space. So why do Fuse file systems perform poorly? Well, the, uh, the main cause of performance overhead is the context switching that occurs while serving file system requests. For example, when application makes open system call, uh, the request goes to the VFS. The VFS will intercept the request and will internally issue multiple lookup requests to the Fuse driver, one for each path component. Therefore, a single open system call is generating multiple internal low-level requests to Fuse driver. And as I mentioned, the Fuse driver simply forwards such requests to the user space. And if the file system is stackable, the Fuse daemon will serve the request by talking to the underlying lower file system. Hence, there's a lot of context switching and data copying going on, which is the cause of the performance overhead. Let's evaluate performance of Fuse using kernel completion workload. In this example, I'm compiling Linux 418 on an Intel quad core machine. I'm using optimized Fuse, and various optimizations are listed here. For example, non-zero entry timeout and attribute timeout allow Fuse framework to leverage VFS caches and reduce the number of requests that are delivered to user space. Hence, it should show improvement. Uh, I'm, I'm using simple stackable Fuse file system here. The graph shows the measured time in seconds on y-axis. On x-axis, I'm comparing EXT4 and Fuse. As you can see, it incurs a very high overhead. So what's the reason? Um, let's uh, delve deeper and analyze the results and understand why, despite optimizations, Fuse incurs high overhead. So in this graph, I'm showing the number of, uh, the number of requests on y-axis and the type of request delivered to Fuse daemon on x-axis. And I'm comparing regular Fuse versus optimized Fuse. As seen from the chart, when the optimizations are enabled, we see four times fewer lookup requests to the Fuse daemon. But we don't see any reduction in get attribute or get extended attribute requests. Why is that? Well, it turns out that during kernel compilation, a file is first opened, then it's read, then VFS issues the get attribute request, and finally the file is closed. So when the file is read, the A time on the file changes. Hence, the attributes cached by the VFS change. And hence, uh, are invalidated upon read. So for the next step, when the get attribute request is issued by the VFS, 
it's not able to leverage the VFS caches because the attributes have already been invalidated. Hence, the requests are delivered to user space. Therefore, you don't see any reduction in number of requests in optimized case. Similarly, VFS issues get uh, extended attribute request to reach security labels before every write request. And since there's no caching of extended attributes in the kernel, all requests are simply delivered to the fused daemon in user space. So uh, what can we do? How can we improve performance of user file systems here? Well, if you can reduce the number of requests delivered to user space, you can improve its performance. So how do we do that? We do that by leveraging a technology called eBPF. eBPF extends Berkeley packet filters, which is a pseudo machine architecture for custom filtering of network packets in the kernel. It is a framework that allows applications to insert custom code in the kernel and is safely executed under a virtual machine runtime. It has been safely designed it has been carefully designed for security. The C code is first converted into bytecode using Clang uh, LLVM uh, compiler toolchain, which is first verified and then loaded into the kernel. And finally, it's executed under the virtual machine runtime. When the code, the, the inserted code cannot allocate memory, uh, execute loops, or access any arbitrary kernel functions. It's the eBPF framework is part of uh, the Linux kernel, and it has evolved as a generic kernel extension framework. It is currently used by tracing, perf, and network subsystem. In this work, we are leveraging eBPF uh, and applying that to storage subsystem. Another feature of eBPF is that it uh, enables um, sharing between the user space application and the kernel uh, code and the code in, in the kernel by, by using maps. Maps are just uh, um, data structures to host arbitrary key value pairs. And like I said, they are shared between user space and kernel. So using eBPF, we are proposing um, an extension framework called ext Fuse for, for Fuse file systems. Uh, with eBPF, Fuse file systems can register thin custom handlers in the kernel called extensions to serve requests in the kernel without context switching to user space. Extensions are safely execute, ex executed under the BPF uh, virtual machine runtime. And we are leveraging eBPF maps to share data or metadata between the fused daemon and the handlers in the kernel. Let's look at its architecture. So we provide a helper library called ex, uh, libextfuse for developers to write their handlers in C-level uh, language and insert them into the kernel. When the file system is mounted, the handlers are first verified and then inserted into the kernel, which are finally executed under the virtual machine runtime. Under extfuse, a request from application uh, request from VFS is delivered to uh, the driver. The driver will first check if, uh, first execute the kernel extension, the appropriate kernel extension, and then the kernel extension can finally uh, either choose to serve the request entirely in the kernel or take the slow path and go back to user space. So what can we do with this framework? What applications can we enable? So these are some of the examples. Since uh, ExeFuse allow custom code to be safely executed in the kernel, it opens up a number of opportunities for optimizations. For example, you can proactively cache metadata in the kernel. And it applies to potentially all Fuse file system. For example, Gluster read ahead uh, optimization can proactively cache directory entries in the kernel and serve from the kernel as opposed to going back to user space. BPF code can also be used to perform custom filtering or permission checks uh, in, in the kernel. For example, uh, Android SDK RFS can perform UID-based checks right in the kernel as opposed to sending these requests to user space and incurring high overhead. Finally, we 
can also enable direct pass through of IO requests to the lower file system in case of stackable file systems. So as opposed to sending IO requests to the user space, which are then served by showing requests to the lower file system, the Fuse driver can directly send these requests to the lower file system where they are served and, and there, there are no context switches to user space. So let's take an example. Let's take the caching example. This example shows how get attribute requests can be cached and served in the kernel. So for this, we first create an ABPF map uh, to host the entries. The map is indexed by the inode number of objects. And the return value is the data structure that is expected by the fuse driver. Since the map is also accessible to user space, the fuse daemon can proactively insert entries in this map, which can be used by the kernel extension, which is the get attribute handler here, and directly serve the request in the kernel. So if you look at the, attribute, uh, the get attribute handler, what it's doing is it's reading the parameters from the kernel, uh, kernel space, and it's going to look up in the map if the attribute is cached for that particular inode. If it is, then it's going to write the data structure expected by the fuse driver and return to the fuse driver without returning to user space. So there is no context switching in this case. However, if there's a miss in the cache, it can always take the regular slow path and go back to user space and serve the request. Since we are caching metadata in the kernel, we also have to timely invalidate the stale entries. To do so, developers need to insert other handlers. For example, this example shows how developers can register set attribute handler, uh, which will invalidate the cache upon change changes in the attribute. So the at set attribute handler will intercept the set attribute request. It's going to read the parameters and find out the inode uh, whose uh, attributes are going to be changed. It will look up the map using that inode number and simply delete the entry from the map. Hence, there will be no more stale entries served in the kernel. Similarly, we can cache lookup extended attributes and symlinks in the kernel and not cause any context switching to user space. So let's look at performance of ext fuse. So in this case, I'm again considering the Linux uh, compilation workload, same machine. Um, and we are caching the lookup, at, lookup request, attribute request, and extended attribute request. We have also enabled pass through on read and write requests. As seen from the chart, the time taken is significantly reduced, and ext fuse incurs only 2.16% overhead compared to uh, optimized fuse. And since we are caching, the worst case memory overhead would be 50 MB if the caches are fully utilized. I'm creating 2 raised to 16 um, entry size caches for, for um, one for lookup. Uh, and attribute and uh, extended attributes. So let's look at the number of requests that are received by Fuse daemon in case of ext fuse. So I'm comparing ext fuse and optimized fuse. Um, number of requests are shown on y-axis. X-axis shows the type of request. As you can see, there are very few attributes, get attribute requests very few extended attribute requests, and no read-write requests because they are directly being delivered to the lower file system. However, notice that you still have open release requests, which means that you can only do so, so much with ext fuse. In conclusion, ext fuse framework can allow developers to insert thin file system handlers and serve requests in the kernel without incurring context switch to user space. Developers can use ext fuse to cache metadata requests, directly pass IO requests to underlying file system, and ins insert custom security checks in the kernel. We ported 
four Fuse file systems to EXE Fuse, and including Android SD card FS, and we showed significant performance improvements. The details are mentioned in the paper. Thank you. And uh, the EXE Fuse code is available on, on GitHub, and the other talks uh, that were presented at Open Source Summit and Linux Plumbers Conference have also been available. Thanks, and I'm happy to take any questions. Shabazz Jaffa, University of Toronto. Uh, great talk. Um, so there are two context switches involved in uh, Fuse. One is from user space to kernel. The second is from uh, kernel uh, back into user space. So with your approach, the second uh, context switch is reduced. I was wondering what's the overhead of the first context switch um, from user space into the kernel, and if there was uh, some performance gain that could be obtained if we were to reduce that context switch as well. So you're talking about the context switching during system calls? Yes. Or, and uh, is it because of the recent meltdown patches, or? Um, in general. So before meltdown, there was no context switching for system calls, right? So you can just issue, uh, applications can issue system call and directly just go to the kernel without incurring context switches. So I'm not sure what context switch, first context switch you're mentioning. Uh, so the uh, request when it goes from the application to the fuse driver, if it is redirected directly to the fuse daemon, do you think there would be any performance gains by that? Oh, I see. Okay, so you're saying, uh, so it's a two, you're saying that it's a two-step process. The first, the application will make system calls, it'll go to the fuse driver, and uh, the fuse driver will incur a context switch, go to the fuse daemon. And you're asking if that will context switch can be reduced. That's right. exactly what I'm trying to avoid here. So. What I'm trying to do here is serve the request directly from Fuse driver. So there'll be no context switching. Not, so, so the second context switch is an artifact of first one, right? So if there's no first one, there'll be no second, right? So the, what Thank I'm, you. Try to, I'm trying to avoid the first one, yeah. Thanks. Hey, Ashish, great talk. So I had a question. Uh, the systems you benchmarked against were all stacked file systems, correct? They yes. weren't network file systems using Fuse. So I haven't benchmarked any network file system. That is correct, yes. Right. So in your opinion, what's going to happen if you benchmark it against them? Are you going to see the same increase? Uh, and the follow-up question is, uh, right now the limitation, at least when I use Fuse for me, is the 128 kilobyte big write size, right? Can that be increased further? And increasing that will lead to an increase in performance for network file systems, in your opinion? Um, so the pass-through feature cannot be applied to network file systems because there is no lower underlying file system. But the metadata caching can be applied. So uh, like I mentioned, the metadata caching is a generic optimization, can be applied to all Fuse file systems. Uh, in fact, I do mention the Gluster read there optimization that can be enabled using metadata caching. So um, I expect similar performance improvement, but to a lower degree for network file systems. Right, and you know, the follow-up question was, is it possible to increase that big write size beyond the 128 kilobytes? Because so, right now you're limited by 128 kilobytes, right? So that, that's orthogonal to ext fuse. That's a feature of fuse. I'm not modifying that. I'm just uh, saying that you can cache some requests in the kernel and serve from the kernel. Okay, we can take this offline. I had a, more of your, your opinion on it, was this is your, okay. thanks. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you, speaker. Thank you. Thank you.